Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. On this episode, we're going to start a new series called Get Your Deck Out. So this series is just going to be based on having interviews, one-on-one -on -one chats with community members or other role models, content creators, and other members of the community, just to sit back, relax, and get to know a bit more. On this one, we've got Jay Boston. So thank you very much for joining us. So we're going to sit back, know a bit more about Jay, what's he up to, what's he going to be up to, and a few ideas for future plans. So stay tuned. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy. Let's go. All right, so thank you very much for joining me, Jay. Um, we'll just do a little bit of intro who you are, just in case there's someone who some, somehow don't know who you are at this point. So do you want to tell there's who you are and what you're about? Uh, yeah, my name's Jay. I run a YouTube channel. It's just my name, Jay Boston. Nice and simple. Uh, I've been doing this now for, what, four or five years, uh, reviewing skateboards, doing urban exploring, uh, and I've taken a, about a two-month break uh, and coming back on December 19, which will be good fun. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff, so um, be out on the lookout for that. It's going to be good. It's going to be good, mate. That's me. That's anyway, I've known you, Tom, because uh, I've been to the UK. We've done some rides together. We've done London at night, and yeah, we've got a lot of things in common. Yeah, I think what was interesting about that with the whole situation is probably the last time that is that the last time you've met up with international or outside like proper event like yeah, from yep. London, and that was a long time ago. Now I think about it. Yeah, it was like we had this whole plan that we and you were involved too. Uh, we were mm. going to get a coach from uh, Saint, uh, what was it called? I always call it Ball Sacramento, but it's Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were going to get a um, going to get a coach from there, loaded up with boards underneath and bags, and then like have those sleeping quarters and stuff, and just go from one side of the American country to the other and uh, meet up, do group rides, all that kind of stuff. I think we had that pegged for January, and we were yeah. at doing that kind of stuff and. Yeah, that uh, obviously because of what happened with the COV ID. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, looking at new things, going up to the Gold Coast in two days to do the uh, Evolve Christmas skateboard uh, cruise and nice, go to Byron Bay and do some cool drone stuff. And yeah, so yeah, it's going to be good fun. I think like yeah, for me myself, I took some, uh, I took a big break from YouTube for a while. I just literally, it become a necessity less than actually just doing it for the enjoyment. And I think you've always got to bring it back to grassroots and do it for what you want to do. Yeah, for, really, you know? exactly. Exactly. Like I've been out on rides, like plenty of rides just on my own really. And not having to have a camera in my hand or worry about what I'm saying or what I'm wearing or if I should be wearing those boots or like so many people just give you so much crap. And, and yeah. it's not that I can't take it. You can definitely take it. You get used to it. You, you develop a thick skin by doing yeah, YouTube yeah. content. But um, I do find, yeah, just going out on your own uh, and just really focusing on not what you're doing, but what everyone else is doing. Like, Embrace the moment. Yeah. Having a good time and yeah, that's it. Just enjoy it rather than- I, do, I found that before that where it's just like, get get to an event and I'm enjoying myself so much that I don't film it. And then sometimes you regret you filmed it and then you look back and you think actually, I, I'm glad I didn't film it because I embraced that moment and actually it was for just for me. A bit like when we was out in London, do you know what I mean? We didn't really film very yeah, much. We just, yeah. let's just enjoy yeah. ourselves, do you know what I mean? Okay, exactly. right, so I've got a couple of things I want to go through, just some casual stuff and then hopefully some just more about you because I think it's always about, obviously it's great to talk about the escape, really, really something you're interested in, but it's also good to know about the person. So I think that's really important. So before YouTube, obviously we have hobbies, interests and so-called addictive personalities with, with e-skate and stuff like that. Mm, what was mm. your interest and hobbies before kind of YouTube? Wow, uh, good question. I don't know, it's been so long. Um, what was I doing? I don't even know, I was bike riding. I know that, like push bike riding. Um, going out quite a fair bit. Back then I just was married. Um, Nothing, not, not a lot going on. I was like, I, I run an agency in uh, like a, in digital media and things like that. So that was, that just keeps me going. I've recently had a baby boy. Um, he's now four, almost five next year. So um, a YouTube baby in a way kind of thing to remind yeah. you. Was. Yeah, exactly. So um, yeah, I think I was pretty focused on that kind of stuff at that moment, but um, yeah, not, not, not a lot. And then, yeah, I got into just living your life as you was, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then I saw the skateboard, the electric skateboard and it was all over. The wife always thinks that I come up with these plans, these ideas and things. And I only try them for a couple of months to get over it. Um, but this one's stuck. This one's stuck. And I don't think it's, it's going anywhere. Flew away, then. Took off from the yeah, platform. Cause that's a good thing. Goody really bounce on to the next thing. So like, obviously you kind of, you're saying very average, kind of doing your own thing, kind of family priorities and whatnot. 
So yeah. what was the, I now want to make YouTube content because I don't know about you and especially in the UK, seeing there's been everyone sprung up and started making content and YouTubes for about the last few months and then they die off mm. and then they realize they don't want to do it. But what made you actually start and then continue to, on that YouTube part? You're right. Like, yeah, just to touch on that second part, you, you have to be super committed to make YouTube work. And a lot of people think it's easy that you get thousands of subscribers, super simple. It's easy, lots of views. It's, it's bloody hard. And as, as well as you know, it is very hard. Um, and uh, just persisting, I think, is the important thing. You're persisting. You're coming up with new ideas. And I think that's what people like. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're doing a great job. I, I see all your stuff pop up. I watch it. Um, I loved it as well with your, with your stuff where you were, you know, swapping out wheels or showing how to put in new... Um, grip tape on or could be anything right you were doing that kind of stuff and it was different and I think that's where um yeah yeah, yeah you just have to you just have to keep pursuing and if it's something that you you find that you don't want to do you'd rather just ride your board a lot of people do that they buy the GoPro and they start to edit and go geez this is a lot of work and then I don't have the time and you know like for instance Sam James he um he's tried pretty much everything he's done podcasts he's done YouTube he's done um article writing he's done a whole bunch of stuff and i think he's he may have found like a mix of what he wants to do but everyone's different i think that's what's really good about it that he's dabbling in all different parts he's extremely technical with his um with his uh with his content whereas i'm more laid back and i do, it's all about the feeling of the board versus about the technical part of it and then you know you're doing the swapping out of wheels and the decks and and you know a little bit more about the lacroix range and so every i think everyone as a community brings something um and that's where like recently I've realized, like you just said, there's so many people out there doing this stuff and they're all kind of doing it the same way um, that I stopped. I'm like, no, like, you know, you've got Scott Davies doing it now and you've got uh, Ronnie Samiento, you've got um, uh, the guy from Shanghai, what's his name? Um, Daniel Kwan, I think he's from Shanghai. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, you know, everyone's, there's so many people doing this stuff now and it's, I guess, a bit saturated. So that's where I've taken a break and I'm like, all right, I want to, I want to keep doing go, this stuff, yeah. but I want to do it in, in a new way, something that hasn't been seen before. So it's, um, it's going to be interesting what happens. Um, I think that's the same thing yeah, for me. Yeah. When I was, um, when I, the reason why I started making content was literally only because I searched for something and it wasn't there. So I thought, well, I, when I discover this, I'm now going to be doing it. For example, like I've done mm. a lot of stuff in the Lacroix on my channel because I felt like there was barely any information about these very expensive boards out there. So I wanted to have yeah. a idea of how do, how do you change the wheels you know such a simple thing or like how do you maintain this or accessorize and what is it what's the actual range of these things so literally it's just to provide information for people and whatnot exactly and i think um as much as people like brands love and hate the content that we create i think um the the movement being personal electric vehicles wouldn't be where it is if it wasn't for the community the conversations that are happening on social media, the YouTube content, the articles that are being written, like there's, there's so much involved and it's because of the passion. I think it's not, it's, and it's not to abuse there in anything. There's going to be people that just hate the, key, the keyboard warriors, the, just the tossers out there that just don't, um, cause it just can't shut up basically. Like and yeah, the world burn. yeah, exactly. Don't be so negative about everything all the time. And, the amount of uh, suppliers and brands and all that that come to me and to others, I'm sure, and say, what am I supposed to do with this particular complaint or this, this issue or that? And, you know, some people complaining that they've received their board, right, in the post from, let's say, the UK, mm. and the board's a little bit cut, sorry, not the board, the box is a little bit open. Nothing's missing. Oh, you know, it's a damaged box. I'm sending it back. I'm like, don't worry. This yeah. has come from the UK, like halfway around the world. Of course, it's going to be. I think the it's problem with that nowadays is people that we've gone from it. we've gone from not having no options at all to having infinite amount of choice of specs of boards, street, AT, both, or different. You know, even one wheels, AUCs, and all that stuff nowadays. So people spoil for choice. Back in the day, you know, what I mean, I've only been doing this for about. I've actually been skating for three years now. I realised this the other day. And I still think I'm kind of grassroots. I literally just started when the GTX came out. That was my first board. And back in the day, you tell, like, this goes on my next thing. What was your first thing that got you into electric vehicles? Your first thing you rode and your, your choices you had, you know, tell me your limited choices, really. Yeah. I mean, you had Boosted, you had Evolve, you had a couple of um, Chinese made boards like Meepo. Um, and back then as well, like, I think why people have 
there's such a movement, there's so much uh, conversation going on is because back then it was more like a hobby. It was an interest, you know, people willing to spend money on it just to see if it was something worthwhile. Now these are boards that like you, like for you, you get around daily on, they have to work. They have to be a, of a certain level. The cells have to be of a certain quality. Uh, the remote control and the safety aspects of it, they have to be at a particular level. So it's, um, it's become more of a lifestyle thing versus a hobby. You now it's, it's, it's a commuter. It's, um, it's a way to, to people to de-stress, you know, that kind of stuff. My wife just went out in here. Uh, but that's, um, that's where I see like the level of boards, the types of boards, the quality of boards have gone so much higher than where they were say two or three years ago. And I think the community just has to say, you know, and you know what, the pricing hasn't changed too much within, you no, know, the mid-range boards. It's just changed options. That's the thing, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So that's where like, as part of this new thing that I'm doing too, uh, not straight away, but in the next couple of months, there'll be an online store. You can purchase them. Brands are involved at the moment. You'll be able to go through and, and have a recommendation of what board is suited to you, what I'd recommend. Exactly. You can buy it straight away and you know, like I, I don't even do any of the logistics or anything. It just goes to the brand in order for them to stay on the website. They have to, there's a, about 10 things they have to make sure of that they, they distribute the board out within 24 hours that there's tracking uh that um it's been done properly there's a whole bunch of stuff that i i know of all the complaints and and they're saying yes yes let's let's do it let's see if it works and um i'm just the middleman basically that's that's getting us very very small just the, cut, just the man ferrying the traffic in the right direction yeah but think of it this way like if if i can somehow uh, let people know that, hey, based on your conditions, like what kind of roads are you on? Whereabouts do you live? What kind of uh, board are you want? What kind of range? Um, how important is this board to your daily commute or lifestyle or whatever it is? And, uh, you know, what's your budget? And, and all those kind of things, right? You, you chuck it into this site and it'll say, here's the three, so three boards that we'd re recommend based, here's a small, medium and high range board. Um, these are the, the, the comparisons between it, buy now. And it's that simple. And um, I think that's going to be huge for a lot of people because there's so much content, like you're saying out there, how am I meant to know the right one for me? Like one of the guys that's in um, our Melbourne group, his name's Milan. Um, he goes by check 2000, if you've seen any of his comments and he has spent six months trying to figure out what board is right for him uh, because he just didn't know. He's like, these people say this about the board and then these people say this and how am I meant to make an educated decision on, on what that's supposed to be. And um, I think that's one of the biggest things, the hurdles that anyone coming into this scene or the, the personal electric vehicle movement is, oh, do I go scooters or do I go bikes or do I go boards or one wheels or this? It's just, even just the categories of them are just growing. And uh, it is like daunting. Speed wheel and stuff like that now, which are these in innovative, creative things nowadays as well. Yeah. And then you, you've got the, the Ferrari style boards, the bio boards, the, you know, the Lacroix Street, what's it called again? Street Pro or Max? We've got or the Super else. Sport now as well. Yeah. And if you calculate all the price and mods on that, it comes to a $10,000 board here in Australia. So it's. Yeah, um, that's in, in crazy. Absolutely crazy. But I was looking at your video on the Prototipo back in the day. It was like four and a half yeah. thousand US Aussie dollars. Yeah, to get it. And now they're double that. But there's people out there that want it. There's, there's you know, rich people or wealthy people that want the top of the top and they're satisfying that, that, uh, that range. There's not that many of them, but again, Lacroix is not a massive company. It's not like Evolve or anything. And they're wanting to do specialist stuff, get paid really well for it. And why not? That's filling one of the voids. So uh, it makes sense. But that's where I think I've, I've stopped for two months and realized look, there is there's community out there. There's so much potential for people out there that see these scooters and boards around and like, oh, and they think in their head, that'd be great for me to get to work. I'm not stuck in a coffin on the freeway trying to get to get to where I need to exactly. go. And, you know, and um, we just need to make it easier for people and, and to try and get them out of, Oh, let me research this on Facebook or Reddit. And they, they see the abuse <laughs> that is going on <laughs> on those platforms is just terrible. Let's, let's bring it back to what it was three years ago where everyone's so excited about getting their boards and not really, worrying if the grip tape's a little bit off or, you know, let's just ride. Let's just get out there and, and have a good time. Yeah, and that's it where... comes across like you've done a lot of reflecting in this lockdown. Oh, like, heaps, how, like heaps and... it, you can hear the passion coming back out and it being a bit yeah. like, this is what I want to be. Yeah. And I, 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 do. I don't even think it's, I don't even think it's going to come through that way on the, on the YouTube channel, but it's definitely like, I, I believe in this, not just for um, being something that someone can do day to day. It's like, 
I look at the climate change that's going on and you have a look at the stacks of cars pretty much parked on freeways going nowhere chugging through fuel and and i'm just like there's the, there's a bike lane like on every freeway that we've got here exactly. in melbourne and it's quiet there's bikes going along it and there's not that many of them but man make I that speaking a, to um, mike right away, from uh, i was speaking to mike from evolve because he's over in the uk at the moment running uk operations <clears throat> and he's saying bike, lane, bike lanes over there are like isolated proper isolated bike lanes and it's only a bike lane we don't have that over here so if you've got the infrastructure yeah, we, we have the same thing yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saying, that's what you build. yeah, I mean, even um, I did a video, I didn't realize at the start that I started working for a council here and they um, said, oh, we need to do this video. It needs to be two minutes. It's on um, new bike lanes that we put into the city. I'm like, oh, cool. And they're like putting 12 kilometers of new bike lanes. You know, they're the green lanes. You know, they're designated for um, bikes and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, oh, so what's the go with personal electric vehicles? Um, and they're like, oh, it's a sticky point at the moment looks like it's going to be greenlit next year, which is 2021. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, they're starting to see that this is something they just have to legislate. They have to legalize um, because just like, you know, Uber coming into a country, they came in dominated. Swarm, There's no yeah. way you can get around it. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what's <clears throat> happening here. Every time I go out on a skateboard or a scooter or whatever, or if I'm driving, I see at least these days, five or six scooters, skateboards, Sometimes like I yell out the window, hey, and they look at us and they're like, mm -hmm. hey. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, so I just seem to do this now. As soon as I see a ride, it's, I literally had this, I was riding along um, Limpet Park in Stratford in Wembley. And just go past them, just look at them and go, and then that's all you need to do. Exactly. <laughs> we'll pass. We need to have some kind of mark or sign or something that we do to say, yeah, yeah. you're part of a community and, yeah. and it's good. You know, kind of like buses when they go past each other, they always give the little <laughs> to each other. Always, mutual funny. respect. Yeah, so exactly. just one thing but I was looking on it. your um on your channel, whatnot. So your most viewed video, Rosie the Shark, uh, five point yeah. two million views. So this is not just mm. about Eastgate, this is about you as a person as well. Mm. As someone in the UK who knows nothing about this story, whatnot, and how did you even discover and get part of this project and stuff like that? So um quite a while back, um, even before Rosie became popular, about a year back, a guy called Steak and Titties. Um that's his calling name anyway. He visited, took some photos, saw it, didn't put it on his channel, it didn't really blow up or anything. And then um, we, I didn't know about this until about a month before that Rosie thing went mental all over the place. I went with a mate, we filmed it, we had a look at it. It was pretty cool. Uh, you shine a very strong torch into the um, chemical and you could see the shark in there and we thought that was pretty sweet. And I didn't really think too much of it. And one of the guys that went a week before us, this guy called Luke, he, um, he put it up online and within two or three days, it went crazy. And I was like, okay, let's, let's get it. And everybody else that I knew started putting all their content up as well, just to kind of ride that wave. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's the thing with anything. If Boosted comes out with a new board, for instance, which they won't anymore, uh, everyone's like jumps on it. Or if Apple brings out yeah. those nine, for us, it's $900 headphones. Uh, which is ridiculous. Um, everyone jumps on it too. So um, I'm like, oh, I better edit my video. So I edited it um, and I wasn't really happy with it. So I stopped. And then I thought, oh, what I might do is I'll go down to, because it's only 45 minute drive. I'll go down and be the latest explore through and see what the latest is and everything. Anyway, I got there and the next door neighbor was out the front. She's like, what are you doing in there? And I was like, oh, I'm, I've heard about this shark and blah, blah, blah. And and she's like, you know, that's trespassing and stuff. And I'm like, no, I know the trespassing laws, blah, blah, blah. I explained it all to her. And she's like, well, I have to deal with this every day. I'm like, I actually felt bad for her because she's getting all these people rocking up. And it's mostly yeah, not yeah. people like me that are respectful. It's spray painters and arsonists yeah, yeah. and, you know, kids with ADHD that are smashing the place down. Um, and so I, I said to her, look, what I'll do is I won't go in. I'll film it from here. And I'll mention, don't come. Like all the neighbors are really frustrated with it and everything. So I did that and she was happy she bugged it off. But that was the video, the story of Rosie the Shark, where I didn't even go in. I explained it and used clips that I had before and um, and clips that you know I'd spoken to other people about. And yeah, that went mental. It went crazy because people saw the shark but didn't know the real story and how it got caught and how it ended up in a tank and all that stuff. And um, yeah, it went pretty bonkers. And even now, people are still saying, what's the latest with Rosie? Like, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> get over it. But, um, <laughs> You need to get a tattoo yeah. somewhere, the Rosie the Shark tattoo. Yeah, like yeah. Tattoo. So yeah. Now that the um, 
that now that restrictions have eased here, like we're pretty much COVID free now in Australia, there are, mm -hmm. we've got international travellers coming in and they're in quarantine. There's five people with COVID in quarantine. So within two weeks, they'll be back into the community. And so it's a different but, situation in the UK right now. Oh so mate, I've heard. We're I think at 45 days COVID free now in Australia. So, just, and that doesn't include need to be quarantine. Acting response for that. So just jumping on the next thing. So obviously you've got your most viewed successful video on your channel what would you say is your favorite video on your channel it doesn't have to be the most viewed or the most the one you think actually i really enjoyed making that or taking part of that and i really look back and go that i really loved creating that video i i think it was probably the paris um paris rides at the paris catch-up that was monumental I mean, you were there, and I remember you had your uh, Raptor, I think, at that time. No, I wasn't um, at the Evolve. I wasn't at the Paris event. I was at a Jolly Boys weekend. It's the only thing I missed. And then we've had oh, you, were right. you had a custom of, you, 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 yeah, you were swapping out wheels and stuff on that thing while we were there. But did you go on the Paris ride, the night ride? I did. I missed the Paris event, unfortunately. I didn't go, Damn. and everyone, as everyone talks about. And I feel cheated again this year because we've got 2020 was going to yeah. happen again, and we didn't happen again. I think from a ride perspective, that was my favorite ride. Um, it was just phenomenal. It was one of the best rides ever, 200 or so people watching the amount of all these skateboarders coming down the walls of the, um, of the what do you call it, stream? What's, what's it called, the river that runs through the canal, yeah. And just watching them all there, everyone was so happy. We had all these whistles going and all these, all these French people or tourists were, uh, uh, you know, lined against the water, like clapping. It's kind of like- Is that when you kind of feel like and... truly, truly connected to something much more special yeah. than you realize? Yeah, I, I, it was just that moment where I think everyone was looking around going, wow, like this is just <laughs> phenomenal. Like, and everyone's just so happy and, and watching the sunset, you know, and Paris is in the backdrop. And it was just one of those moments, just like unbelievable. And then at the end of it, um, the, the French um, organizers brought out these bottles of, um, I don't know what it was. It was pretty toxic alcohol. <laughs> and it was at the end of the ride. <laughs> so like, oh, they're just pouring it into plastic cups and we're drinking where there's music going on. Oh, it's just, it was just great. Good vibes. Really good. And yeah, we ended up at a pub and I don't know what happened with the boards. I think we just had the boards all stacked up somewhere and we just were drinking. And I don't know about you, but when you go to these awesome. events and you have multiple like 30, 40 plus boards, power outlets are like a, power station just being sad yeah well even um even in new york they've got power bank against power bank and you know and sometimes you'll fry the you'll fry the point and the you street, have to go and find yeah. another one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know that's you look i look back and it's just so positive stuff i mean even did you go on the ride in paris at night where we went um up through the i think you were there through all no, the, i didn't go um, to paris i didn't oh, get did, to go i, I didn't go to paris there. at all i didn't go to paris. oh man it's the only that thing I missed, cool too. the event I missed. So just a quick thing, I mean, when, yeah. um, so obviously you've got YouTube stuff and you said just take some time out and whatnot. How do you find the balance between, obviously with something like with your doing, it's not just just ski skate, you've got exploring and obviously you already yeah. side stories as well. How do you, how do you keep the balance between YouTube, work, family, and then at the end of all that, your, your life as well, individually? As well? Yeah. Um, it's a, it's a fine art that I've had to kind of perfect over time. But I find even these days, like brutally honest, like I know because of COVID and I haven't been exercising and all that, but I've, I've become a bit of a chunky monkey and I'm trying to fit in exercise into the mix too. So I've got exercise, I've got family, I've got the kids that want to spend time with us. I've got work that dedicates a lot of my time. I've got YouTube, I've got friends. Um, there's so much going on. Right. Um, and family, try and catch up with family every so often. Yeah. So even over the weekend, we had Christmas things like with extended family that we wanted to catch up with. Um, so I couldn't go exploring with the guys. And then uh, yesterday I was completely zonked. I spent most of the day sleeping because it was just, it's been brutal the last three or four weeks. But when, when, when it goes to like during the week, let's say a normal week, I'll make sure I sleep. Like I need seven hours of sleep without a doubt, just to, to squeeze everything in. And then um, I start work and I, I make sure during the, during my working time, it is only work. I'm not checking emails for these gating, not accepting people into groups or responding to questions or anything. It's work, you know? So I think making sure that you don't throw all your marbles up in the air and you're trying to do everything at once, dedicate time to the things that matter. So I'll, I'll work until midday. Then I've got an hour or so for a break. 
um, for the lunch. And again, I, I run the show, but I want to do what everyone else does. I want to be obviously a respectable boss. I don't want to be out skateboarding while everyone else is stressing out. Um, so for an hour, I might go out and do a ride or I might sit down and do some research or whatever uh, while I'm eating my lunch on the next video I'm doing. And then in the afternoon, back to work. And then at night, um, I get home, uh, family, family time, baths, bed, by about quarter to eight, sit there to make sure the kids get to sleep. Eight o'clock, spend time with the wife. She normally watches a show or so till about 8.30, quarter to nine. She's in bed by nine. And then from nine to about midnight, that's where I'm doing the YouTube stuff. Um, and then on weekends, like, yeah, kids go to sleep for an hour or two at the lunchtime. So I can smash out a bit of uh, YouTube stuff then. And then, yeah, family time for S the rest of it all we're exploring in the early morning. So here at the, at the moment, sun gets up at half past five in the morning and goes to, and it sets at about nine o'clock at night. So there's plenty of light that I can get up, yeah. go exploring. I'm back by nine o'clock. Kids are happy, wife's happy. So it's just planning. Planning is just the important thing. Um, it, yeah, it, you just got to make sure that you try, try not to do so much stuff at once or else you'll never get anything Keep done. Keep it manageable, yeah. So yeah, as man, I say, yeah. for the kind of e-skate scene entirely, how would you say it's been like to be kind of a major influencer in regards to like the worldwide community and whatnot? Um, well, yeah, it, it kind of was by default. So I just started creating content and then um, Evolve started noticing back then it was a different Maddie that was working there and they started sending us stuff like wheels to give away and stuff. And I was more happy to do that. And then like, for instance, right now, I've got, I think, six skateboards in boxes at home that I haven't opened yet, including a Metro Board X, um, a Beast, a Summer Board, a Scooter. It's just so much like, and I haven't had time to do it, right? So I actually finish work for the year this Wednesday. And then um, that night I'm unboxing all of them. And then I go away to Queensland and Evolve's hooking us up with a board while I'm there. And then when I get back before Christmas, everything's going to be written and reviewed. And that's when it'll all start to come out. But it's uh, to be an influencer, like it's nice, but I wanted to also make sure that I wasn't like, you'll, you'll probably find a lot of, influencers get quickly grabbed up by some of the, the brands out there as well. So for instance, yeah, exactly. um, Nobleman Tech might be, you might be an ambassador or like, for instance, like Scotty's an ambassador of them. And there's a bunch of other ones that he is, uh, Lyceon, I like you on whatever it's called. Uh, and then you've got Sam who was an ambassador for X way, but, uh, but dropped it. Uh, just cause I think the, I think the word ambassador is thrown around so much nowadays without, yeah. what is defined by an ambassador you can be ambassador but in other words you've we the brand's got a name to you for, for me an ambassador should be that relationship that community that communication of of your product and hopefully guiding a company from your perspective but not just oh exactly like slap slap an ambassador stamp on everyone and they're saying exactly they're and I, and I, brand. yeah i think there has to be some kind of mutual respect as well maybe the brands do have to pay these ambassadors and for their time and effort and everything too, not just because they they do YouTube, they need to show that there's a respect there, not just to give them a board, but to, to value their time. Uh, and that's where I think, yeah, an ambassador sounds cool uh, to be an ambassador, but it doesn't come with a lot of perks, to be honest. Um, but, uh, and I, I would, like, that's why I've never been an ambassador of any skateboard company at all. I've just reviewed them or gone and see, seen where they work or, um, you know, happy to do demo days or anything like that. But, um, Again, never been paid to do a review. I have obviously been paid to go to places like the UK um, to visit Trampa. Um, not paid. I'd like to pay. I say the words "supported" is the words. I think is so you yeah. can do make the stuff that they want you to do. I think is the way to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know, in order to get this around the wife, um, obviously, yeah, you do get paid in monetization on YouTube. Uh, you get to keep the boards, so and one day you could sell them. I've never. Just thinking out loud. I don't think I've ever sold a friend. I sold a friend. I've never sold a board to a friend <laughs> or, or anyone else for that matter. I've still got all the boards in my garage, uh, all 40 something of them. Um, Cause I, I still feel <laughs> How do you like do storage with that kind of stuff. Oh mate, I'll show you one day. I've got it down to a T. A lot of IKEA <laughs> little storage compartments. You must and... be the best Tetris player in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's challenging. That's for sure. But yeah, that's where um, being an influencer is nice. And I, and I hope I come across as being someone that's quite unbiased and uh, I see it as it is. And like, yeah, I don't know the technical parts of a board as well as others. And that's where they can do that. But for me, it's mm -hmm. more about the newbie, you know, the guy that gets on and goes, okay, I can see myself doing this. And 
riding and how does it feel and is there stuttering or you know types of wheels that, that's that's what gets me going whereas and that, don't forget too this is more of a hobby for me like it's a paid hobby that the wife actually likes because i do get paid from monetization um so that's why i can keep doing what i'm doing but um i've never wanted this to be so serious that it becomes a chore and that's where like i can take two months off um and yeah i've had so many really cool close contacts and those in the community come and say you're all right mate like you know are you coming back or we miss you and it's, it's been it's been nice but um yeah like you said at the start i've kind of found my legs again and going into a more of a military style um review control the situation this is how i'm doing it now kind of thing yeah exactly yeah so one thing i would say about the whole youtube thing um just because of audience perspective would you say to someone if they said you're only in youtube for the money me no because there's this the illusion that there's they literally i've ne like you say i for me personally i've never made anything ever from youtube i literally do it just for the passion and what i enjoy to do and then exactly. like yourself anything i've ever got i've ever i've just passed along to someone who i know needs it exactly so uh yeah i do have monetization on and the reason for that is so that it can support my next uh, gopro purchase or tripods or lighting or live stream software or licenses for that stuff or you know because like let's say your and this is in australian dollars your epidemic sound subscriptions 15 bucks your um memo live subscription which is my live streaming software is 30 dollars a month uh all your updates to funnel cut pro all you're purchasing that's about 500 bucks uh you've there's a whole bunch of stuff buying uh, SD cards or new lenses or that, that can get super expensive. So, you know, if I can put, turn on monetization, just a little tick box that supports me purchasing this stuff, or even the new uniform that I'll be working as part of all the new videos, it all just goes back into it. Um, it like I make good your money from, from, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I make, um, good money from, uh, my business and I can support the team and, we can go on holidays and all that kind of stuff, but it's not like, you're not seeing me flying around in a Bugatti or anything that yeah, would be exactly. awesome to do. It's, it's just cause like, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that's trying to reach for the stars. I'm just wanting to have a good, happy, as stressless as possible existence with family. Um, One thing I discovered I think, the other day was uh, people say about want to earn more. And I'm saying for me, my metaphor is I want to earn less stress. Whatever I call stress, just reduce that. That's what I'm trying to earn minimize the stress if it's earning more and in less working yeah. more working less that's what exactly like if you can yeah if you if you can have a happy life less stress uh, you're still making good money uh, you can still go on holidays uh, that kind of thing i think that's um that's super important for some people like for me it is for you it sounds like it is too but some people just want to make more money even if it hurts people or um yeah you know, so that maybe yeah some people that's what they feel is important in life and that's fine but for me it's more being at home every night, watching a bit of telly with the wife, um, being out with mates, not worrying about uh, massive projects and millions of dollars of uh, at stake if you don't achieve yeah, something. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not for me. Okay, it's so just one thing. So obviously you've got your, your little ones. What would you say their future? What would you say, what, you, what future would you want them in regards to like personal electric vehicles of that? Where would you want to see them growing up? Yeah, I mean, I, I involve my son in quite a lot. Like he's actually really good at non-motorized scooters. Like he flies more than me. He can go faster than me on that than I can on a skateboard. Um, and he, uh, I can see he's starting to realize it too. Like he likes going out. He doesn't want to be in the car as much. He'd rather walk or scoot or jump on the back of the skateboard or whatever it is right so i think it's important that and my daughter she she's on a scooter now too i think it's important that they see that it's not always the easiest way to do things sometimes being on a scooter or a skateboard is actually more fun and you might not get there as quickly but you're gonna have fun on the way um so i think uh yeah i think i that's why i'm so um i'm so excited about people embracing this and and uh hopefully getting around like there's so many people that live here in the city and probably in yours as well that don't really have to go very far they can just scoot around and it just makes sense you know you're not you're not choking up the transport system and uh you're not parking in uh getting charged parking fines or i think i had that and, myself the other day literally i grabbed my board went into town and it was really heavy really heavy rain so i had to drive and i forgot about all the issues that came with that oh, i need to change oh, yeah. parking where am i going to park is there available parking you know, yeah, oh, the tolls. Away. 
and it's, it sounds like we go on about stuff for long, but I actually, I don't know about you, but I forget about these issues because I ride so much. And then it reminds me when I get back in the car. Exactly, exactly. And that's where like right now, as of tomorrow, we're looking at a new office space that's only four or five Ks from here. Um, but it's a, a lot harder for customers and, and ourselves to park. And the guys are like, well, just give us some of your skateboards or scooters and we can do that. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds good. So that it just solves a problem really quickly for those that are in dense areas that like London, for instance, congestion tax or whatever it's called. It's 20 where, miles know, an hour in all of London, now, by the way, as well. The whole inside of London. So what's the point, just, really? You can go faster on a scooter on the sidewalk than you can on the road. It's, it's, uh, it's mental. Well, there's, so I, um, that's the thing. Like if I'm on my Vols, I see people go past me on their bikes. And then we get we get the hassle that we're going too quick. So I right, yeah. got two more questions for you. So look, yeah, mate, uh, first question would be uh, obviously end of year. We always talk about the next year as we did last year, but we didn't expect this. Twenty twenty one. What do you want to see in twenty twenty one in regards to personal electric transport? Um, what would you hope to see? Not just from personal electric, but where would you want to see in regards to community or events or products out there? I think the events are good. I'd like to organize more events. There's not enough events here in Melbourne, for instance. Um, but I just want to see more people out having fun on these PEVs. I think they're huge. I think the more that we can see people out and about, get the, get, like, they should, like here's something, 2021 should be the year that personal electric vehicles around the world get legalized. It's normal. It's just normal, normalized, that's it. Yeah, just let people buy them and ride them. And yes, people Anything, are going to die. Yeah. People are going to get injuries, like, like, just like bike riders, just like people in cars. Uh, there is a hell of a lot less. Like there was a guy here in Perth, I think it was, that died on a skateboard only like a week ago. But again, he wasn't wearing a helmet. He, like there were, there were all these things that we must, if they're going to be legalized, there are going to be things that we might have to, you know, sacrifice. Like, yeah, wear a helmet, wear, wear padding. Uh, maybe have them registered in some respect a QR code underneath your your deck so it can be recognised. If, if a police officer pulls it over, he can scan it. It'll come up with, you know, maybe there's the pevmovement.com slash and a registration number. Yep, this is where it is. This is the battery cells. This is, this is uh, you know, it's, it's geared for road, terrain, what's the max speed it can do, like all that stuff. And it can give them a bit of peace of mind. If that, if um, the police, like maybe they can press a warning and put in a code, how many times has this skateboarder been warned uh, that they're doing something stupid? I think that kind of stuff would be perfect. Um, That's all you want, simple. Just want to ride in peace. Yeah, yeah. Come up with a system that can be adopted by the world and uh, it's, it's not personally identifiable. It's identified by the board. I think that's important too. Um, there are obviously loopholes. So someone that just got their three strikes and they can't ride that board anymore, or maybe the board gets taken off them. That might be another thing for six months that they can go out and buy another one. But again, it's going to make people think about it, whether or not they're going to go out and spend another $1,500 on a, on a board while they're yeah, waiting That's the interesting their, thing that we all say though. Every passionate rider says we don't not want legislation. We want some kind of guidance. That's what everyone. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't want to be rogue. We don't, we don't want to be in the gray zone or anything. We want to know that we can go out and safely ride these boards and not get harassed by the authorities and um, know that we're actually doing something good for the, for the world too, by, you know, like to charge a skateboard is about 15, 20 cents. Um, and you can go say 20, 25 miles. You do, you do that in a car, you're looking at six, $7. Um, of petrol, and it's really bad for the for the for the, um, for the climate change, for the carbon offset, uh, carbon emissions. So it's uh, those kind of things are important, I think, for twenty twenty one. So here's my last one. Okay, so Christmas, exciting time. You could have one present underneath the tree. What would you have underneath that tree? Uh, mm. yeah, like in terms of a skateboard, or it could be anything. I said both, just for fun. Any. Thing. Okay, let's go with the anything for first. Um, I'd want a spa <laughs> or a jacuzzi if I could yeah. have anything. I, yeah, just, you know, a big day, just jump into that with your mates, have a couple of beers, get the jets going. That'd be pretty good from a skateboard point of view. Um, I don't know, like I'm, so, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my tramper. I'm happy with um, the Metro Board X. Um, I like the one wheel still, the pint. I know you I think you've sold yours, but um Yeah, I've got my neck I've got an XR now. Just Oh you got an XR. It's so good. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I have I've got a good variety of boards that I don't really need um the boards anymore, but I'd oh here's one. I'd love to get uh, a 
a very high range electric bike. I think that would be awesome. Oh, okay. Um, well, electric yeah, just, mountain bike or like an electric motorcycle? Probably like a hybrid of some sort. And, um, you know, so it can do street and mountain. I think, yeah, mountain board, like if it was a mountain bike, I'd love that because you could just go down just doing it free wheel and then um, get it to boost you back up to the hill because I'm a lazy bastard. Um, <laughs> I think that would be pretty good. <laughs> so you say you're very much yeah. e-skate content now. You're very content. Yeah. Like, yeah, like I love, you know, I can open up the garage. Which one should I ride today? That one, let's go. And off you go. Like I'm, I'm getting batteries redone with um, one of the local builders here. I should be able to pick that up tonight. I uh, can't wait to get back out on, on that board and, and get out there. Um, but yeah, nothing... Nothing right now is kind of tickling my fancy in terms of anything that's coming out. I know the buy boards is pretty special um, that they've got coming out, the plutonium. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what any of these brands could do that would go, whoa, that's, that's pretty out there. Like it could be GPS tracking uh, on some of these I'm more expensive boards. looking for more features less than performance kind of thing. Yeah, so. well, performance is always going to be there, you know, if it's range or speed or uh, anything like that. But um, I think it's more, like, I don't know. That's where, like, it'll be interesting because, you know, Evolve, obviously, it's now almost two years since they brought out the other one. I keep saying this, uh, they need to bring year. out the next thing. You need to see what it is. Need to, yeah, yeah. They need to evolve and they need to, um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure what they're going to be doing there. Um, the thing is, I'm going to say one last thing on that thing is with the X-Way Atlas coming out, it, feel like it almost feels like the all-wheel drive board that Evolve should have released at that point with the Evolve Cup. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. seeing some of the images that are out and it's got the lights on the, kind of like these mud guards on the wheels. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, which it's really clean. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of helping people stay clean while they're out getting dirty. And um, it's, yeah, it's going to be interesting because I don't know how they'll go. This is their first hurrah into all terrain. And if if they're going to be able to do it properly and successfully. There's a lot of maintenance of that board. It's, that's the only thing. But more, yeah. more motors, more gear, more issues potentially but we'll see yeah and just looking at how thin it is and for, and having four motors on there and the range will probably suffer a bit but who knows they might have come out with something that we're not sure of or i don't know x way are good but we'll see yeah okay so we're gonna leave there jay is there anything you want to say or talk about or ask me or no man more? i think um i think you're doing a great job and i think uh with what you're giving out to the community it's always positive vibes and um and i think uh you know the more people should be working with you and you know, you're pretty much what I, you're pretty much what I do over there and yeah, you should just be smashing it out. Yeah. I was just saying your little guy on the side there. Um, well that. Good yeah. On. Yeah. There he goes. Now he's <laughs> dancing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I was going to say, thank you very much. Joe. I really appreciate the time. Anytime, so it's mate. A pleasure always That's catching good. up and seeing how you all and just, I tell you what, next year there's the the event we go to. It'd be nice to come up and meet up again. So I was gonna say thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Anytime, mate. No, I'm looking forward to getting over there once you're COVID free and um yeah, we'll get back to business. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, we'll get on the trampers and go in the woods and have some fun. That's mate. it. That's it. Breaks and bones. Fine. So I say thank you very much, Jay. Really appreciate it. So leave it there. Right? Thanks a lot. All right, mate. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.